was inspired by a Greek goddess, Nike, the goddess of victory. Coincidentally, Nike, the company, has victoriously dominated the athletic footwear and sportswear industry <coughs> and continues to do so today. However, they didn't do this without a few bumps along the way. I'm Demi Young, and this is Gracie Villanueva, and we're researchers with the National Conference of Ethics, and today we're going to tell you guys about unethical decision-making in the industry, specifically with Nike, and unethical decision-making with Nike, um, in order to inform you so that way when you guys graduate, you guys are aware of the decisions you're making in the business world. We're going to cover how Nike came to be, the mistakes they made, how they were covered, and where they are today. Gracie? All right, for the first point, I'll be talking about the history of Nike. Bill Bowerman, a track coach and Phil Knight, a track star at the University of Oregon, founded Nike in 1964. Years later, in 1985, Bowerman passed away at the age of 24. And during this time, Phil Knight stepped down as CEO and president, and this is when our current CEO, Mark Parker, takes over. Nike's headquarters is located in Beaverton, Oregon. And according to Nike Inc., Nike operates in 160 countries, six continents, and has over 40,000 plus employees all over the world. Due to Nike's goal of maximizing profit, they, they turn to outsourcing, manufacturing their apparel, their footwear, and equipment to third world countries because of the cheap labor. In this result, they got involved in some poor ethical decisions with child labor and sweatshops. They had sweatshops and child laborers and child labor factories all over the world. Some main ones were Pakistan, Vietnam, some in Southeast Asia, Mexico. According to the Labor's Rights Union, Nike employed um, kids under the age of 16 and paid them less than a dollar an hour. They also mistreated them and had them working in really poor working conditions. And in the 1996 uh, Life magazine, it was a June edition, uh, this, the Nike controversy became public as uh, everyone found out about this, but it really focused it on a 12-year-old boy from Pakistan that was uh, making soccer, ball, soccer balls for Nike, and he was getting paid six cents an hour. So this was really shocking for the public and caused, uh, it showed that this multi-million dollar com uh, company was really taking advantage of these poor countries. So now I'm gonna pass it down to Demi to talk about how the company bounced back from their controversy. After exploitation of Nike's factory workers was exposed, Nike worked really fast to rebuild and recover. Former CEO Philip Knight made 12 promises to their factory workers immediately. Some of these were better air quality in factories, having non-government organizations periodically monitor factories to ensure safe working environments. Also, they had loans for factories and family members, as well as high school course, high school level courses available to their workers. They also engaged in philanthropy by donating large sums of money to countries that hosted their factories and they also engaged in sustainability, where they discontinued using toxic glue in 90% of their products. They also recycled all unused rubber in their factories. They also created the Nike Foundation, where they are, their goal is to stop intergenerational poverty amongst women in Africa. Lastly, we'll talk about the future of Nike. Nike will remain the number one, uh, the largest number one company in the world. To add some statistics in there, according to Nike Inc., in 2015, uh, Nike's revenues is estimated to be 38 to, 28 to 38 billion dollars. According to Forbes magazine, Nike is expected to grow 6.5% in 2019, and also in the same year, Nike is expected to be worth $178 billion. Also, to, also, they are coming up with some upcoming products. Some products you can look forward in the near future are the Nike Free Trainer 7.0. These are a special edition sneaker. But what's more exciting is the uh, their digital future of Nike, which is a Fuel Band 2. 
uh, this band uh, is like a watch, but it also tracks like the steps you take, the miles you run, um, the <coughs> calories you burn. But what's really cool about it is that you can sync it to your iPod, your iPhone, and it like stores all the stuff on your band. In, in conclusion, um, we talked about the history of Nike and how Nike experienced some poor ethical decisions with child labor and sweatshops. Secondly, we talked about how the company bounced back by how the former CEO, Phil Knight, created the 12 promises to help improve social responsibility. And lastly, we talked about the future of Nike, how we expect Nike to be worth $178 billion in the next four to five years. Thank you all so much. We will now take questions.